the top names in show business, a playground for flamboyant high rollers, and the dramatic arena for the Super Bowls of boxing. Tonight, from Caesars Palace on the Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. The pride and the glory, WBC heavyweight champion Larry Holmes defends his crown against the number one contender, Jerry Cooney. To be sure, the heat here in Las Vegas has been oppressive, but the 100 degree temperatures that we recorded on our own thermometer ringside here at Caesars Palace just a little bit ago are nothing compared to the heat of anticipation that has surrounded this heavyweight championship fight. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and it is a pleasure to welcome Sugar Ray Leonard, the welterweight champion. Ray, good to see you back among them. Well, thank you, Barry. It's my first major appearance, and it's always a pleasure working with you. All the statements about this fight have been said. All the words have been spoken and written for the past several months. Ray, let me give you some of those statements. Give me your response, if you would. First of all, the one that we hear and see all the time, Jerry Cooney is just not of the caliber, too inexperienced to be fighting a guy like Larry Holmes. Well, that is true, Barry. Jerry Cooney is inexperienced, but I think that factor won't make a difference because he does does carry a big punch in my left hand. Larry Holmes, 32 years old. People say the legs are gone. Well, Larry Holmes has been in a lot of wars with uh, Ernie Shavers, Ken Norton. He's been through uh, a series of knockdowns with, with Ronaldo Snipes. I think that uh, there's a question mark there, and Jerry Cooney will have to answer it. Jerry Cooney is a one-handed fighter. He has a left hook. He has nothing more. Again, the same answer for Jerry Cooney. He's a big heavyweight, and all he needs is one punch. Larry Holmes is the kind of guy who doesn't possess a knockout punch. The only man he's put down for the count since he's been heavyweight champion is Alfredo Evangelista. Well, Larry Holmes, he throws a series of combinations, and I think the accumulation of punches that Larry Holmes throws is very, very effective. Jerry Cooney has fought people on the way down. He's fought nobody on the way up. Well, that's true once again, but I still believe that Kuhn is capable of knocking any man he lands a punch on. Larry Holmes is a guy who's scared right now, outsiked, if you will, because the public support has gone to Cooney, and Holmes feels it should have been to him. Now, I have to say no to that, because I think that uh, Larry Holmes has been knocked down, and there's a great fear there, Barry, the fact of getting off the canvas and come back. Uh, Larry Holmes has been through major wars, and the fact that he faced Muhammad Ali here, and that was a very significant fight. I don't think he's gun-shy or he's in all of anything, any of this uh, attention. As we've said, the statements have been made. The final statement is about to be made in this 20-foot square ring right behind us. But, you know, this is much more than just a sporting event. And for the other side of this heavyweight championship fight, let's get some comments from our own Larry Merchant. Larry? The basic reason for this multi-million dollar extravaganza is that just as blacks identify with heroes like Jackie Robinson and Muhammad Ali, White people occasionally invest in a Vince Lombardi or a Jerry Cooney. Because Sugar Ray Leonard is the most popular athlete in America of any persuasion, I think it's fair to say that this impulse is more racial than racist. But that impulse has projected Jerry Cooney into this rich opportunity, despite the fact that he's never faced a legitimate contender and that he hasn't fought anyone for more than a year. That's the simple truth of the matter. But as someone once said, what's so hot about the truth? The truth also is that there's a lot of excitement and electricity and anticipation here. The fight offers a contrast between the champion Larry Holmes, a boxer who has faced just about every test and passed it, and a challenger, Jerry Cooney, who though he is relatively inexperienced, is young and strong and unquenchably faithful to his destiny. If his chin proves to be as strong as his faith, and he's never been faced with a test of that chin by a real pro like Larry Holmes, then he has a puncher's chance to become the heavyweight champion. I'm glad I'm here, about to get the answers. Well, you look at what is certainly a spectacle here at Caesars Palace. This is Jerry Cooney, the challenger, coming into the ring. I've talked to you on several occasions about this kind of thing. What are the thoughts that a fighter has at this juncture? Well, coming out, especially for the challenger, Barry, this is the biggest moment of your life, and you want to win. He has been very throughout the week. I would have to think now, Ray, the butterflies have got to just be churning in Jerry King. Oh, without question, Barry. At this point now, an opponent is closer to the heart attack than anything because the pressure is there, the anticipation. Once you step into the ring, oh, the feeling, you must experience it to understand it. But do you have to get hit at least one time for all the butterflies to go away, for everything just to become all business, to worry about winning a championship? Does that or can that happen before the first punch is thrown? Once uh, a punch is landed, whether it's your punch or the uh, other guy's punch, then it's okay, but then again, uh, if you're on the loser's end, the butterflies never really go away.
and I have to think the public sentiment right now is toward the challenger Jerry Cooney. But fans all over the opposite side of the ring from us, dressed in green, green and white, those have become the colors of Jerry Cooney. Well, the people are without question behind Jerry Cooney. And from a remarkable standpoint, Cooney did a commercial without being champion. So what lies ahead of him if he becomes champion? You know, everybody has been saying that the guy is inexperienced. He hasn't fought anybody. And I can only hearken back to another heavyweight who people said the very same thing about. They said, who did he ever fight? The heavyweight I'm talking about was Rocky Marciano. The people they were talking about was Jersey Joe Walcott, Ezra Charles, Archie Moore. They said they were all old men. Well, the same thing went for Leon Spinks, a guy coming from the Olympics. No way, no experience. But he became the heavyweight champ of the world. Jerry Cooney has fought just three minutes and 45 seconds in the last 25 months. That, perhaps, is the biggest question mark that hangs over that man's head right now. Well, that's a question that needs to be answered. Although I think that Jerry Cooney is pleased and very content with the way he's been, he's been progressing. Uh, you don't have to go 15 rounds to prove that you're a great fighter. People say that there's a code in boxing that a man has to suffer to really be effective and to get the public adoration. Has Jerry Cooney suffered enough? I doubt that very seriously, but this fight here with Larry Holmes, a guy capable of doing everything in the ring, this is a very good test and a very good challenge for Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney has been quoted as saying coming into this fight that Larry Holmes can only move for so long. He's going to have to stand up and move at the beginning, and after a while, he's got to stop moving and start fighting. Well, you're going to have to hit Larry Holmes in order to slow him down. Holmes has been very effective at outboxing his opponents, and then eventually getting flat-footed and stopping him. Jerry Cooney comes into the ring. He does look relaxed, but at the same time, he has a rather stern look at his face. Victor Valley, his trainer, a guy that Jerry Cooney calls Pop. And that's been the kind of relationship they've had. Well, that type of relationship helps. It's very helpful with a fighter and uh, his trainer or manager. And Cooney has Jerry Cooney comes people. in here, of course. He has won 25 fights. He has not lost the fight. He has 22 knockouts. And the question, of course, the biggest question is, can he go the distance? Can he go any kind of a distance? Because the last two men he's fought, he's knocked out in one round. So things are rather calm in the ring right now as we await the presence of the champion, Larry Holmes. Cooney still does look calm, but there's a little bit of tenseness, I think, in his face that I haven't seen earlier this week. Well, he's tight, without question. I know the feeling being in that ring for a major fight. Jerry Cooney realized, as a matter of fact, that he was a great puncher only after training for a fight with a guy by the name of Animal Lopez, who he knocked out. It wasn't Lopez that made him realize what a good puncher was. It was a sparring partner that was imported, and he hit him with the left hand of the stomach. The sparring partner went down, and it was at that point that Jerry Cooney said, maybe I can really hit somebody here. There was no question as to the left hand of this guy. Well, Jerry Cooney's left hand, without question, is his major asset, and they say he's a one-handed fighter. All he needs is one hand because he carries a big punch in that left hook. Cooney comes from Huntington, Long Island, and who was the last hero in Huntington, Long Island? It goes back quite a ways. Walt Whitman, the poet was the last hero. Boxing really unheard of in that community, essentially a white collar community. Not really a hotbed of boxing. And speaking of a hotbed of boxing, Easton Pennsylvania's, or Easton Pennsylvania's proudest son, Larry Holmes, making his way very quickly into the ring now. And you've talked about this on several occasions too, and that is that it's great to break a sweat, to really work yourself up, and that may be what Larry Holmes is yes, doing he's here. he's doing, he must loosen up, and Larry Holmes has been in the ring a number of times, so many times, and uh, he's aware that he must be loose against a puncher like Jerry Cooney. We've talked about some of the questions that have to be answered so far as Jerry Cooney is concerned. There are some questions that have to be answered as far as Larry Holmes are concerned too, and one of them I think you can relate to very well, and that is, has his ego been challenged? Now, I think it's safe to say that happened with you in the first fight you had with the first Durant, you had something you had to prove, and it cost you the fight. What about Larry Holmes? Well, I think Larry Holmes is aware that he must do Jerry Cooney in the sooner the better. And the people that has been with Jerry Cooney throughout this whole uh, uh, training schedule, and Larry Holmes wanted to change all of that. Larry Holmes comes in here having won 39 fights without a loss. He is 39 and 0. 29 of those fights coming as knockouts. You look at the champion, the champion looks stern. He also does look relaxed. The other side of the coin is Jerry Cooney. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, Ray, and really the real glaring difference is the age. Larry Holmes is 32, Jerry Cooney is 25. Well, without question, Barry, the age is a factor. Being older, without question, the legs have a tendency to go, and the height. It's no good unless you know how to use it. Otherwise, it's really comparable. Jerry Cooney comes in 13 pounds heavier. He has three inches in height. But really, the reach is the same. And all things being equal, I would say there's little to choose between these two, other than the fact that one man is seven years the senior of the other. Ladies and gentlemen, the official...
officials. Let's go to the ring announcer right now, Chuck. Call for the introduction of the fighters. For the next contest, the judges are Dwayne Ford, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Ruff. The timekeeper is Charlie Ruff. Counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo and Dr. Flip Omansky. And the referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 15 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting from Eastern Pennsylvania, weighing 212 and one half pounds, the undefeated WBC Heavyweight Champion of the World, the Eastern Assassin, Larry Holmes. corner fighting out of Huntington New York weighing 225 and one half pounds he is undefeated in his professional career he is ranked number one by both the WBA and the WBC introducing gentlemen Jerry Cooney well the crowd had loud support of Jerry Cooney but Ray tradition in boxing parted with in a very very major way here they introduced the champion first i was quite surprised right because normally champion gets the respect of being announced last very big surprise i don't know if that's gonna have any kind of a psychological effect if there was anything that was pre-planned victor valley with the final words to jerry cooney and now we are going to find out if all the hoopla was only that or if what is here is really a challenger a likely challenger to the champion larry holmes holmes will stare cooney will look straight down that we expect sprint across the ring at his man. Let's see if he does that now with Jerry Cooney. Cooney is a guy who has not gone past the first three minutes of a fight in his last two outings. Crowd comes alive. There is electricity. I realize that that may be a cliche, but there is simply no other way to describe what is happening right now. Both men wearing white trunks. Cooney with a clover leaf. Red trim on Larry Holmes. Holmes comes quickly out, takes a jab from Cooney. Round one, the heavyweight championship of the world, the most anticipated fight in years. Cooney, that quick left jab, or rather Holmes, that quick left jab again. Holmes circles Cooney. Cooney's stationary right now. Larry should keep moving. Larry has a flickering left jab, very quick, very accurate, and it, it stuns you. But Cooney's left jab is very, very potent. It comes out very strong. Holmes all business with the jab right now. That is what he said he was going to do. So all the conversation before the fight going pretty much according to plan right now. Cooney dancing. Cooney digging a left to the body. And Holmes spins off the ropes. At this point now, especially in the first round, Bert, anything can happen. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the guys went down because they both seem to be a little tight in this first round. It's a good observation. Both men do. Cooney looking very patient right now. Cooney, of course, had the shoulder problem. He has also been cut on the bridge of his nose. That happened not too long ago, and I am certain that Larry Holmes is going to take a good long look at that and try to point that jab toward the bridge of the nose. Cooney tries to force the action again. In fact, even here early in round one, there's a little reddening on the nose of Jerry Cooney. No damage, no blood, but just a little reddening. Again, the flicking jab. There has been a big question as to whether or not Jerry Cooney has a right hand. Some of the observers say that the injury that he had might have helped his right hand. Well, Cooney won't be able to do any damage unless he hurts his man and gets him against a rope or in a corner. Outside in the center ring will be all Larry Holmes unless he's hit by a certain punch. Holmes being very effective early on with that jab. Cooney has scored once with a left of the body. Cooney ideally is at about eight inches away to do the most damage. They say Jerry Cooney doesn't have a right hand. I'm waiting for Jerry Cooney to release the right hand because I think it would be a big surprise to Larry Holmes. That was a left hand that was low thrown by Jerry Cooney. Holmes again with the jab. This is round one. Nobody, I don't think, amongst the 32,000 people here anticipates this fight will go 15 rounds, including the participants. Holmes tries an, up, rather, Cooney tries an uppercut, and a wild right-hand lead that time by Jerry Cooney is sidestepped neatly by Larry Holmes, the champion. Well, Cooney can't afford to throw punches such as he threw uh, earlier, because Larry Holmes is very quick and a very intelligent fighter. 
Tony, of course, can strike very quickly, and he does follow up. That has been a question about some of the opponents that Larry Holmes has had. They have knocked him down. They have been unable to put the clincher on. Cooney has never had a problem with that. Most observers feel that if Larry Holmes can last four or five rounds, then the fight should be his. Cooney tries to press it. No damage. Again, Holmes with a jab in the face. trying to jab. Took a good right hand that time from Holmes, but did not take a backward step. End of round one. A lot of activity in that round race. It's a very good round for both fighters. So it really wasn't a feeling out process. Both men throwing some pretty heavy artillery. You look into the corner of Jerry Cooney. Victor Valley, of course, the man in the ring. Only one man is allowed in the ring. Cooney nodding his head to whatever it is that Valley is saying. So he can at least with that gap. Well, he's dropped the corner of Jerry Cooney. Let, let the hook go. You got a double gap, not single gap, Jerry. Single gap is no good. Double gap. Nice pull. Get that defense. This guy is shit. I'm going to tell you. Give him a little sip of water. Pull. Relax. A little sip, Jerry. All right. Nice and cool. Thanks. Relax. Let's relax. do a fucking business here. All right. It's a relax, shit. Jerry. When he goes wild, when he goes wild, don't go wild with him. Just take your goddamn time. Black. This is shit. I feel that Larry Holmes left field now for the first round. He found out what weakness Jerry Cooney possesses. So we come to the center of the ring for round two. This is the heavyweight championship. Both men in great condition, no question about it. Both those punches were a little bit short thrown by Jerry Cooney to Larry Holmes. Holmes still up on his toes, still keeping that jab right in the face of the challenger, Jerry Cooney. Both men look all business. Holmes drops his hands when he's away from his man, but it's not a showboat tactic. It's a way to relax. That's a very good move tactic by Larry Holmes. Jab to the head and jab to the body. And Holmes is staying off the ropes right now, and I think that's something that could be significant as this fight goes on. It's very significant because Kuhn is destructive for any man that gets against the ropes or in the corner. This is just the second round. It is a hot night. You saw Holmes bounce off the ropes right away that time. Didn't give Cooney a chance to smother him there. Holmes has been effective with the jab with the nose of Jerry Cooney. Neither man is marked. It's been said that Larry Holmes has more to lose by a loss to Jerry Cooney than Jerry Cooney has to lose by a loss to Larry Holmes. has said on several occasions, this will be it, he will retire. There is nobody in the house who believes that. There was a great psychological battle involved in this fight. That psychological battle is now over. It is now down to four hands. What I know is about Jerry Cooney, he must get in position, he must sit up to throw a punch, a solid punch. I think as long as Larry Holmes is moving laterally, he's going to give Cooney a lot of trouble, especially if he's able to connect with the overhand right. It's a chopping right hand that you saw Cooney throw a moment ago, and it came up a little bit short. Holmes has been throwing that right hand only on occasion. He led with it once in the first round. He has been staying off the ropes. And Cooney took a good right hand from Holmes. He staggers and is down. Cooney is down from the right hand by Larry Holmes. He is back up, but he is on rubber legs, Ray. This will be the round. I see that Cooney legs are still rubbery, and without question, Larry Holmes is going to take advantage of this opportunity and get Jerry Cooney out of there. Cooney has 30 seconds to survive. Remember, Larry Holmes said round two. Cooney tries to dig a left hand of the body. Holmes being very patient. Cooney's legs seem to be back a little bit right now. It was a right hand from Holmes that put him down. And now Holmes works with a jab once more. Ten seconds remaining in the second round. Cooney with a jab to the top of the head of Larry Holmes. End of round two. Larry Holmes may be very patient after he had his man down. Obviously, he didn't think he was hurt that bad. Well, he was. Jerry Cooney was hurt very seriously because Larry set his man up with the overhand right. And here, we have to take a look at it. As Larry Holmes moves around his man, he throws a jab to the body and comes across with the punching right hand. And as we see here, 
Cooney's in big trouble as he stumbles, can't catch his balance, and he eventually goes down. We'll take another look at it, Ray, from another angle. Well, here we have a better shot. That overhand right to the top of the forehead really put Jerry Cooney in a great deal of trouble. Well, I think the impressive thing so far with the champion is, again, he's really not wasting any punches. Significant, of course, as the fight goes on. We take one more look, Ray. I was going to say it's significant of reminding me, at least, of Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, again, we saw how Larry Holmes said his man with that jab to the body overhand right to the head. You might see it again, Barry. So, again, Holmes being very patient. Larry Holmes has always been a guy who has looked for the long route. He's not really a guy who looks for a knockout because he's not a one-punch knockout artist. We mentioned at the top of the show that he has really only put one man down for the count since he's been champion. Well, time was with Jerry Cooney. Fortunately, uh, there was not much time left. Or if there was, Jerry, I mean, Jerry Cooney would, would have been out of there. Again, Holmes with a very effective flicking jab. being patient. He has not had his back on the ropes this entire fight. And that has taken the fight plan of Jerry Cooney away from him. That was a good left hand by Cooney and it stunned Holmes momentarily. It was a left hand to the side of the head by Cooney. Best punch of the fight for the challenger. I was curious to see uh, Cooney's reaction after being hit or floored. He maintains composure and now he's starting to come back against Larry Holmes. There's another good left hand to the chin of Larry Holmes. Holmes did not appear to be hurt, but they were two good punches by Jerry Cooney. And another one. That one not as effective as the other two. Holmes again, keeping his hands down about chest level. And Cooney now going upstairs after going to the body early. And another good left hand by the challenger. Cooney scored to the cheek that time. Of Larry Holmes, Cooney being effective, Ray, in this round. As long as Larry stays right in front of his man, Cooney's going to be able to deliver that left hook to the body, to the head. And another good right hand that time by Cooney. Backs Holmes up. A little bit of puffiness alongside the right eye of the champion. It does not, at this juncture at least, appear to be anything serious. Just a little puffiness. Neither man is really marked. This is round three. Combination, the left and then a right. Both were a little bit short, thrown by Cooney. Cooney. Holmes retreating now here in the third round. Cooney is physically stronger than Larry Holmes, although Larry Holmes has the experience to get out of the way. Holmes with the right hand, a little bit short on the nose of Jerry Cooney. Holmes corner, very quiet. Right hand also a little bit short. Not really doing any damage, but the head snapping back of Holmes. And Holmes, once more, gets off the ropes. You can see when Cooney's about to release that uh, left hook. He extends his left foot, and he releases, releases that left hook to the body. He steps in with it. That was a right hand by Holmes that time. Holmes being very patient, right? He has to be against a puncher like Jerry Cooney. He's doing the right thing. Reddening again on the nose of Jerry Cooney. No blood from either man. We're in the third round. Five seconds remaining. Counting down. A good round for Jerry Cooney here. Uppercut misses. End of round three. Larry Holmes smiled at Jerry Cooney going back. Nothing antagonistic. At this point, I think each man has the other's respect. Double that jab. Double that jab. And the right hand after. Watch me, yeah. Listen, Jerry, you have to Jerry, you have to you have to get that funny bone. You gotta get that funny bone. Get the funny bone. Yeah, you, know, you gotta shift. Go down on the deep and hook to the chin. When you wanna throw the right hand, get down on a little bit and then throw it. Give me the mouthpiece. Come on. Holmes up off his stool early. Cooney remains seated. Now he comes up. This is the fourth round. In the center of the ring. That last round was a confidence builder for Jerry Cooney. Holmes goes back to the jab now. Holmes is flat-footed. He was on his toes for the first two and a half rounds. A good left to the body. Backs Holmes up. flat 
flat footed and backing up right now. Takes four jabs, but inconsequential jabs they are from Jerry Cooney. But what Jerry Cooney wants to do, you know he's been throwing a left hook to the body. He wants to slow Larry Holmes down as much as he possibly can and then take control. Well, this is the fourth round. Now, a lot of people said from this juncture on, the fight should belong to Larry Holmes. If Cooney could get to him early, the left hand of the head. seems to be measuring his man a little bit more. Left digs downstairs to the body, but it was not a great punch by Jerry Cooney. Well, you notice Larry Holmes became flat-footed, and normally he's figured his man out, and he saw an opening, and he wants to get to it. That was a right hand to the ribs that time that seemed to hurt Holmes a little bit. I don't think Holmes can afford to exchange uh, punch for punch with Jerry Cooney. Holmes has been very patient. Actually, both men being much more patient than I expected they would be, to tell you the truth. There was two right hands, and again, it staggered Jerry Cooney, left hand, rather not a right hand, staggered him a little bit. Cooney does not appear to be hurt. It was two lefts, back to back, by the champion. I'll be curious to see, Barry, what would happen if Holmes started going to Cooney's body. There's another left hand from the challenger, Jerry Cooney. Holmes' jab has not been as effective in the last round and a half. Let's see if Holmes does start to go to the body. One minute remaining here in the fourth round. That puffiness under the eye, or alongside the eye, of Larry Holmes does not appear to be any worse here in the fourth round than it was in the third. Cooney's starting to get inside just a little bit, and whether Holmes is pacing himself or not remains to be seen. The left hand and the right misses. Well, again, Larry is flat for him. I think he wants to for Cooney to exert himself. Holmes took three good shots that time from Cooney. Holmes is hurt. I don't think so, Brian. I think he was just dazed by the impact of the punch. He seems to be still composed. Larry Holmes still has his senses. remains flat-footed. He still is not at his back on the ropes, and that is a significant factor here in the fight. Flicks the left jab and misses it. Right hand misses by Cooney. Crowd really comes alive now, actually for the first time tonight. Cooney has the right hand, but it's not as accurate and as powerful as his left hand. Cooney with another good left to the ribs of Larry Holmes as the bell sounds ending the fourth round, and Holmes a little bit slow going back to his corner. Jerry Cooney's corner. Leave it there. Leave it in the middle. Okay, I got it. He's hurt that Drop, drop that, 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 what do you call it? The hand. Don't, don't leave your hand open. 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 Don't expose yourself. Right. And move that, move that head. Hold this thing. Move that head. A little breather. The way you go, you're not even breathing. You're in a hell of a shake. Be short with the punches. Be awake all the time. If you jab once, you got to jab twice. <laughs> Okay, okay. You want to keep your cool, guys. Okay. Keep your hands up all the time. Close to your body. Close to that too. Yeah, all right. Close with your body. Double. Could he doesn't yeah. seem to even be breathing heavy. We come to the fifth round. Center of the ring. Could he getting his confidence quite a lot here. Well, I think here at this point, I think age is a factor and it's starting to set in with Larry Holmes. Although I've seen Holmes, his expression on Holmes' face uh, in a number of fights, and he's always came out victorious, so it could be deceptive. So far, neither man really taking control. Left hand by Cooney scores again on Larry Holmes. Holmes backing up and Cooney coming after him. Well, Jerry's doing what he do best. He's stalking his opponent, trying to get him in the corner and work his body. Combination, not really a damaging combination from Jerry Cooney against Larry Holmes, but significantly, Larry Holmes is flat-footed. Now he tries to get out of there again, but takes a left hand to the head in the process. Cooney jabbing actually rather effectively. In fact, maybe at this juncture a little bit more effectively than the champion. Well, I feel this way that Cooney's height is starting to help him out. Uh, as far as inexperience is concerned, because it's quite difficult to hit a tall man who has three or four inches over you. Cooney at 6'6", six, six. another good left hand, and Holmes spins out of there. 
Cooney has been the aggressor here. A little puffiness around the face of Larry Holmes right now. This is the fifth round. Holmes misses with a wild left hand. Well, see, that's what Larry Holmes has to do, Doug. He has to mix his punches up. He can't throw the same consistent left jab. He has to go to the body, left to the head, mix his punches up, confuse his opponent. At this point, he's got to have a lot of respect for the guy in front of him right now, and vice versa. Holmes again, still flat footed. Now he gets up on his toes. And a right hand, and that backs up Cooney. Well, the question has been asked can Cooney take a good punch? He's taking a number of punches from Larry Holmes. Holmes with another right hand. But again, Cooney's right there. Cooney talks to Holmes. And Cooney comes right back with a strong left jab. Cooney goes downstairs. Caught that one on gloves, did Holmes. And neither one of those punches really damaged him. But I noticed when, when Larry Holmes is moving in boxing, he can land with that overhand right there. The minute he's left with it, it's not as effective as it is when he's moving. Inside the 30-second mark remaining here in the fifth round. And that's one of the few clinches we've had tonight. Well, these guys have been throwing punches in the first round up to this point. Both men have taken some very good shots. Holmes with a combination gets out of there. Then he comes after him again. Cooney going to the head now more than the body. Whistling left hand misses by Holmes. End of round five. Very close fight so far. As you mentioned, Ray, both men taking some pretty good shots. But Let's take a look at the right hand thrown by Larry Holmes here, Ray. Well, we can see how effective that overhand right of Larry Holmes is as he lands an overhand right on Jerry Cooney. And Cooney has answered the question, can he take a punch? Took a good shot right there. He backed up one step, but that's all. It came right back to action. In the corner of Jerry Cooney and now in the corner of the champion, Larry oh, Holmes. This guy take your title away from you. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Jerry Cooney remains seated longer, but it, he does not seem to be tired. Neither man really seems to be fatigued at this juncture. Round six. Jerry just gave me a wink, Perry. I think he's very, very confident. I don't know that there are a lot of people who expect the Jerry Cooney to be forcing the fight at this point, and yet he is doing that. Holmes is back on his toes now here as we start the sixth round. That is where he's been most effective. Holmes still keeping those arms rather low, but that has been his style, and it's been good enough for 39 straight victories. There's a right hand, big widespread right hand, and actually, Larry Holmes' legs went a little rubbery, but he did grin at him after that. Cooney again, this time gets his man against the ropes, but once more, Holmes gets out of there. Holmes is spending no time on the ropes. He knows that's where he can really be hurt. Well, he can't afford to, but he has to stay off those ropes and out of those corners. Mills Lane has a conversation with Larry Holmes. I don't know what that was about. Those shots to the body. And a left hand into the body of Larry Holmes thrown by Jerry Cooney with very big punches. Right uppercut comes a little bit short. Cooney jabbing, I think, perhaps more effectively than a lot of people thought he would. Holmes jab, there's a right hand at the top of the head, but Holmes did not step backwards. I was going to say Holmes jab has not been as effective in the last three rounds as it was in the first three. Well, both fighters, the punches are getting more accurate, and this, without question, is a knockout fight. Neither man has made any mistakes. Each has fought the fight that he needs to fight. Both men have been hurt. Both men have retreated on occasion. Cooney has forced the fight most of the way. As Holmes was able to put Cooney down, I just knew that was it, Bird, but time was on Cooney's side. Good sharp left jab. Remember, the only knockout of the fight coming in the second round. Cooney with the left hand, another left to the body. But the right hand missed. Cooney has been somewhat ineffective so far with the right hand. There was a right to the body, right hand lead. Those were good punches by Jerry Cooney. And I, once again, Bird, I have to say, I was in this ring, and it's hot. And A, 
age is a factor. Jerry Cooney, fortunately, is a young man, and he can take the majority of this heat. But well, we said that could be really the only part of the tail of the tape that could have any significance whatsoever, and that is age. Cooney at 30, or at 25, rather, and Holmes at 32. Inside of 30 seconds remaining in the sixth round, that right hand was caught by the glove of Jerry Cooney. There was a left hand by Cooney. Holmes comes back with a right hand, and the legs wobble once more. Cooney is in trouble against the ropes. Holmes tries to measure him. A right hand misses, but another one scores on another right hand. Now a left and an uppercut. Cooney goes through the rope, but is still on his feet. Battling gamely. Ten seconds inside of ten seconds remaining. A right hand, hard right by the champion. Cooney is still on his feet. Holmes scoring almost at well, but Cooney will not go down. End of the round, a big round for Holmes, but Cooney would not fall. Jerry Cooney's took a lot of punches from Larry Holmes. Take another look at the punishment that was handed out by Larry Holmes against Jerry Cooney. Well, Cooney landed those big body shots to Larry Holmes, but Holmes was able to come back. And here we see Larry Holmes just pretty dominating Jerry Cooney. Has Cooney in big trouble. And here, he just can't get any more clean punches in, Barry, to get his man out of there. Cooney did the right thing of trying to smuggle Larry Holmes' punches, and he was able to survive the round. First punch, first big one, was a right hand to the top of the head. Almost the same punch as we saw in the second round. Well, that right hand by Larry Holmes caught Cooney on the side of the face. And it put him in trouble, really big trouble. Cooney did the right thing, stayed close to Larry and Lai was unable to land another clean blow. And at that point, I really thought Cooney was going to go down. He came between the ropes, bounced back up, stayed on his feet, took four or five more shots, and was still on his feet at the end of the round. He came back strong enough to land some good punches on Lai Holmes. Now is a real test for the challenger, Jerry Cooney. Holmes, very patient. Still, neither man is marked. There is a swelling around the left eye of Jerry Cooney. Rather bad swelling, actually. And Holmes works on it. Now there's a little blood alongside the eye of Jerry Cooney. It is the left eye almost unquestionably will work on that. The Holmes knows that right hand gets through very easily, and you're going to see Larry Holmes attempt to throw out the right hand or land the right hand time to time. Holmes working the left hand on the left eye of Jerry Cooney. There is blood. You can't really tell because there's a lot of Vaseline up there exactly where that cut is. It appears to be in the eyebrow. Well, Cooney keeps his hands up. His guards are very well. Larry goes to the body, bring his hands down to come over with the overhand right. Swelling under the eye of Jerry Cooney as well, but the cut, I believe, is alongside the eyebrow, and Cooney, uh, Holmes, rather, is really peppering that eye with the left hand. Cooney, a good left to the body that time, but Holmes knows that he has his man in trouble now. And that cut is rather nasty, along with the swelling underneath it, right? Well, that's another experience. When a fighter that's never been cut before, it's like a trauma. It's a big experience in one's uh, career. It is also the kind of cut where the blood will drip into the eye of Jerry Cooney. And I'm sure it's troubling him right now. Holmes really seems to just be measuring his man, looking at the extent of that injury to the eye. It is not enough right now to stop the fight, but certainly it will become a factor. Cooney has been very tough so far, and he has no reason to back off. There is also a cut on the bridge of the nose of Jerry Cooney now. Well, after being in trouble a couple of times, I'm very impressed with that with the way Jerry Cooney is able to come back. And now you can just see the confidence surge in Holmes. He missed a wild right hand, but that left jab has been very effective in this round, more so since any round since the second. Lai Holmes' rhythm is starting to throw Jerry Cooney off. Whenever he's bouncing and boxing, it seems to throw Cooney's punches off. He can't really land any clean blows. The fight has really seesawed, actually. First couple of the rounds was with Larry Holmes, and then Cooney really started to come on. And he really had control of the fight until that knockdown in the last round. And now Larry Holmes seems to be in control again. Blood from the bridge of the nose of Jerry Cooney and alongside the left eye. 30 seconds remaining here. Seventh round, scheduled for 15. Nobody believes it'll go that far. Holmes really looks very confident right now. The cut on the nose, I don't think, really bothers Cooney. He tries to bomb Holmes with the right hand, but Holmes doesn't back up. Combination that time, right hand leading and a left to the body. Cooney draws a warning from Mills, laying for a low blow. There was a right hand by Cooney. Cooney still is not backed up. You've got to give the man credit where it is due. End of round seven. Holmes makes his way back to his corner. Holmes looks like a competent fighter right now, Ray. Yes, he does. And as a matter of fact, he made a prediction he would stop his man in seven rounds. Yeah, put that uh, I, I, 
Jerry, you got to move in this guy now. you got to take a change. You're standing too Close straight. Your eyes. You're standing your too eyes. fucking straight. Oh, very good. Not fair. It's not good either. Now, you go there. I'm telling you the fucking truth. Close it's your not eyes. true. It's not good. So you cannot say straight. you got to move in and rough Close this guy. Eyes. you got to move in. you got to move in this guy and rough this guy. Don't let him jeff from that side. He's staying too long. Now, you got to move in on this guy with your hand. Get into a crouch. I think that tells the whole story. What you just heard Victor Valle say is the story of this fight. The eye does not look, look too good. You've got to crowd this man. You've got to get in on him. That simply said is what Jerry Cooney has to do. Well, Cooney must do that. He must get inside and stay close to his man because his eye looks very bad. So that is the scenario right now. Larry Holmes comes out to the center of the ring. The eye is closing rapidly. Puffiness underneath and a cut alongside the eye. The blood is stopped for the moment, but Larry Holmes certainly will work on it. And Cooney trying to heed the advice of his corner, and that is crowd Larry Holmes. Now that is something unquestionably easier said than done. Cooney tries to get inside, digs the right left hand rather than the heart of Larry Holmes. Holmes still appears to be measuring his man. He's been very effective with that jab since the cut. Cooney's never faced a man as mobile and as versatile as Larry Holmes. So I think this is what's creating trouble for Jerry Cooney. Holmes with a good jab again. Holmes is just keeping Cooney off balance, keeping him off of him in general and not allowing him to do what Victor Valley said. Money, Jerry, money. It is not easy to crowd a man when you have his left hand in your face. It's very difficult. Cooney needs to stay closer because outside, Larry Holmes throws that left jab and makes that cut even worse. Really no blood showing from the eye of Jerry Cooney here in the eighth round. But the eye is very puffy. And now the blood starts from the nose of Jerry Cooney, who does get Holmes momentarily on the ropes. But Holmes gets off there very quickly. Holmes fighting a very smart fight so far. And Cooney with no reason to back off. Got a right uppercut in on the chin that time of Holmes. So Cooney has not gone away. And Holmes comes up with a left and a right hand is short. This is when Larry Holmes can really capitalize on Cooney's mistakes when Cooney makes that big miss. That was a right hand that actually Holmes was open for, but Cooney could not score with it. Holmes has gone back flat-footed now. He's been most effective when he's been on his toes. Jerry doesn't seem as strong as he was in the first couple of rounds. That right hand is kind of pointed, and it is getting in, but it's really not doing much damage. There's not as much thing on Cooney's punches, although I still think he's capable of really hurting Larry. One minute remaining here in the eighth round. Holmes seemingly pacing himself a little bit, tries a right-hand lead, but misses with it. Cooney misses with a right of his own. Holmes now stationary for just a moment, waits for Cooney to throw a left hand. That's as close as Holmes has come to really being in a corner. He is flat-footed, takes a right hand, and actually might have been hurt a little bit by that right hand. Cooney now backs up a little bit, lost his mouthpiece in that last exchange. Cooney tries to get inside again, can't quite do it, and Holmes keeps him off him. And a combination that time by Holmes, scores once more on Cooney. And a right hand by Holmes that time. Right hand by Cooney again, gets in, but doesn't do any damage. There's a right hand by the champion, and another right hand. You know, they but both Cooney challenge, they challenge each other, bud. Exchanging blows. A left hand that time, a little bit short. Again, not a lot of blood. Cooney's corner has really done a pretty good job on the eye. The blood still pours from the nose, but the eye doesn't seem to be any worse right now. Take a look at this. Well, this round, we saw both men. I think they was really challenging each other because Larry threw that right hand, and Cooney came back with some punches of his own. Here we see Cooney's mouthpiece comes out. And now Larry's still stalking his opponent. Trying to get closer, and Cooney is still not intimidated. I have to ask you, Ray, does a fighter sometimes just take a round to kind of catch his breath? Do you ever do that? Because I would, just as an observer, I would think that that might have been what Larry Holmes is doing. Well, Larry did coast. Don't let this bum take your time. Sal at 82 years old, still offering some sage advice, saying, don't let this bum take this fight from you. Well, Cooney is hardly a bum. He has represented himself very well so far tonight. The champion fighting every bit the part of a champion. 
not a lot of people felt this fight would go to the extent that it has, that being the ninth round. But I, was, I was one of the guys, too, but I didn't think the fight would go past five rounds. This is the furthest route that Jerry Cooney has ever trod. What you hear from the crowd are not boos. They're yelling for Cooney. A left hand of the nose that time of Holmes thrown by Cooney. And Holmes goes against the ropes for one of the few times tonight. And now the blood has really started to pour from the eye of Jerry Cooney. I don't know if it was a punch that opened the cut up again. A left hand and a combination by Cooney, but that cut looks pretty nasty right now over the left eye of Jerry Cooney. The eye just a slit. He's got to have trouble seeing, I would think, right? Yes, that's the reason he's going straight in line. Now I can't afford to let Jerry Cooney just rush him straight ahead. Larry needs to sidestep, let his man run off balance, and then take advantage of it. Let me ask you something that I asked you after your fight with, with Thomas Hearns, and that, that is, had Thomas Hearns perhaps have hooked you, come with a little bit more from the outside to the inside with his punches, you said yourself you wouldn't have been able to see him. That's true, because I had no peripheral vision. And I think uh, that cut is affecting Cooney's sight now from the side of his peripheral vision. So let's see if Larry Holmes, the air is a good right hand, exactly what we were just talking about. What surprises me, Brad, when Larry lands that overhand right, Cooney comes back with something. Cooney still does have something here. His left hand has still been affected. His right hand, he has pushed a little bit. Arm punches for the large part with the right hand. Well, that took again by Cooney. Once again, Holmes just does not seem to be able to get Cooney off of him here and really do some business. The eye has not gotten terribly worse since it was opened up in the sixth round. And Cooney is still the aggressor in the fight. Left hand that time now to the right side of Jerry Cooney's face. And there's a right hand that once more it staggers Jerry Cooney. But Cooney fights back. I don't know the reason for that uh, call. Bill's Lane stopping and momentarily talking to Jerry Cooney. 30 seconds remaining here in the ninth round. Larry right, setting him up for the right hand again. And there was a low blow thrown by Cooney. And Larry Holmes will now have as much time as is needed. Well, he's going to need to recover from this low blow. That was a big punch, Barry, to the, uh, to the groin. Five minutes, says Mills Lane now. He will have up to five minutes to resume. Ray Arcel in the ring, a lot of conversation about this. Now, in this case, I would have to think that could help Jerry Cooney as much as it could help Larry Holmes. Well, Take another look at it. Well, we have a look, and that was a very low blow by Jerry Cooney. Once again, you would have to think that this could help the challenger as much as the champion. I think it can help both men. Uh, the punch wasn't intentional, I'm quite sure. And at this point now, because they've been throwing a lot of punches, the rest helps both men. So the time will be stopped, and Larry Holmes can take up to five minutes to recuperate from that low blow. Certainly it was unintentional. Take another look at it. Well, we see it from a different view, and that left hook by Jerry Cooney goes right down to the groin area of Larry Holmes. Holmes can take a few more minutes if he wants it here. He can start fighting anytime he wants, but he can take up to five minutes. Holmes says he's okay. And the fight continues. The left hook that time thrown by Cooney to the head of Larry Holmes. Holmes does not seem affected by the low blow. Cooney misses with a right hand. As Holmes just gets the head out of the way in time. Cooney's left eye is not appreciably worse than it was, but there is a swelling underneath it, not a lot of blood alongside it now as Cooney gets in the corner for a moment, rather Holmes gets in the corner for a moment at the bell. So Larry Holmes will now have another three minutes to recoup. What are you putting in there? Don't worry about it. Medicine. You're all right. Some of you are not bleeding now. You're all right. Now listen, Jerry, you got to weave. You got to weave and come back with a hook to the chin. Get a hook. You Day for it. 
There was a little swelling under the eyes of Larry Holmes in about the second round, third round. It has gotten no worse since then. As we come to round 10, Larry Holmes up off the stool once more. And Victor Valley right in the ear of the challenger, Jerry Cooney. You heard Valley say, you got a hook to the chin and go with the right hand of the kidneys. Again, flat footed combination is a good left hand. And now Cooney dances in front of him and mocks Larry Holmes. As if to say, I am not hurt. And again, a punch that was a little bit low thrown by Cooney. A right hand missed, and Holmes backs out of there. Cooney really the aggressor. A right hand to the head that time by Cooney. And a left to the head of Larry Holmes as Cooney comes alive here. Holmes at his back to the ropes. You notice how aggressive Cooney became because there was two points taken away from Jerry Cooney for that low blow. And that could be significant in a fight that is close. Holmes goes flat-footed again. Remember, he has done the most damage when he's been up on his toes. And Holmes took a right hand that time from Cooney and now ties him up. It was a good right hand, Brian, because he landed very solidly. It's not any one punch that hurts, but it's a combination of all of them that do. Another right hand from Cooney. And there's a right to the body, and a left hand was low, and Holmes comes back with an uppercut that goes right on the chin of Jerry Cooney. And another right hand. That was blocked in large part by the gloves of Cooney. This is the tenth round. Holmes seemingly has been in control of the fight, but Cooney has not gone away, and he has been the aggressor. And right now, I think you might have to say that Cooney is the harder puncher. Yes, Cooney still looks very strong. Early I said that Cooney didn't have that much sting on his punches, but now he seems to be refreshed, a new fighter. That left hand was a little bit short, as Larry Holmes has stayed flat-footed, and of course that could always be an indication that a man could be getting tired. Well, Holmes could very well be tired, but you know, Brad, Feel that Larry's trying to make him punch himself out. Cooney forcing the action, and Holmes is providing a stationary target. There's a right hand by Holmes. And another right hand, and now Cooney wheels into the corner. I think Larry put a little trick on uh, Cooney. And a left hand scores by Holmes, and a right. And another right hand by Larry Holmes. That right hand becoming very effective. It has been his best punch. There's another. And a left hand and a right behind him. Gee. All right on the face of Jerry Cooney. Both of these guys taking big punches from each other. And standing toe-to-toe -to -toe now, and Holmes with the right hand caught largely by the glove. So was that one. Cooney comes back with a left and a right of his own. I would think this position is where Cooney really wants to be, right on his man. That's where he is the most effective. There's another right hand by Holmes. It keeps Cooney off of him, and yet another as we come to the end of the 10th round. Combination by Holmes, and a left hand by Cooney at the bell. for both men, really, and both men saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be right here. Here we see some of the punches that were thrown in the few seconds that the round ended, before the round ended. Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes both unleashing a series of punches. That was a good round for both men. So Jerry Cooney just has not gone away. It's just that simple. still a certain amount of calm. That eye actually has not really gotten any worse. And the crowd has really come alive here at Caesars Palace, right? Well, Brian, I just found out there was only one point taken away from Jerry Cooney for that low blow. Actually, if anything, I think the swelling on the eye of Jerry Cooney has gone down rather than gotten any worse, and there's been no blood for the last couple of rounds. That tenth round, both men really went at it, threw a lot of punches. Cooney's corner has really done a job on that eye. Holmes has not been able to make it any worse. The swelling has not gotten any worse either. Cooney's stalking. Holmes in a corner now. That's where Cooney wants him. Another 
warning for a low blow, and Mills Lane takes another point away from Jerry Cooney, and that could become significant. This is the 11th round. Been an exciting fight, crowd-pleasing fight so far, seesaw fight. Holmes has done the most serious damage, but Cooney has done some damage of his own on Holmes, and Holmes has slowed down a little bit. Holmes has been flat-footed and getting closer to the ropes than he has been in the earlier rounds. And that, of course, is a sign of being tired. Cooney trying to press him. Right now, I would have to say that Cooney is less tired than Larry Holmes, even though Cooney has never fought more than eight rounds. Those punches missed by Cooney. Larry now is using his experience against Jerry Cooney. I think he's, he's trying to take a breather. He's letting Jerry Cooney punch. He's tying him up. Both those punches missed by Jerry Cooney. Cooney not as sharp with his punches. And Holmes comes back with that jab to the face. That was a left hand that just flicked across the nose of Holmes thrown by Cooney. I believe we're going to see a replay of the right hand by Larry Holmes because it seems to be setting Jerry Cooney up once again. And he tries to go downstairs, but Holmes blocks it with his glove. And a little bit of blood again starts to show from the left eye of Jerry Cooney. Left hand did get in, and there's that right hand, just as you said, but it caught him mostly on the shoulder. Because that could hurt, too. And remember, Cooney did have a shoulder injury. And another low blow. And Mills Lane, let's see, does he take a point away this time? He does not. He asks Holmes if he's okay. They touch gloves and everything is all right. Cooney tries to go downstairs again and again is a little bit low with it. Now Larry's going to try to make Cooney work hard again. Try to make him exert himself, tire himself out. But I don't think uh, Jerry's going to cooperate because Jerry's in tremendous shape. That right hand by Holmes is a little short. The overhand right has been Larry Holmes' best weapon so far tonight. Holmes has no real pattern to how he beats people. He's beat people with the left jab, he's beat people with the right cross, he's beat people with a straight right, and tonight it's the overhand right that has done the most damage. End of round 11. You look into the corner of Jerry Cooney, he is not much more marked now than he was in the sixth round. Give me the water, give me the water, come back. How many points you got? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Neither man really breathing as heavy as you might expect for someone who has taken as much punishment over the course of time that they have. Well, both men prepare for each other because I know each other's defense. No less a source than Patty Flood, one of the great corner men in boxing, said that Jerry Cooney is the biggest mystery I've ever seen in boxing. Well, Jerry Cooney has answered all the skeptics that idea is worthy of being here, win or lose. goes back to his toes now and there's a right hand once more and the rubbery legs go on Jerry Cooney for a moment he backs away now try to catch his breath and get it back Holmes has been most effective when he's been on his toes he went up on his toes and scored with a quick right hand I know Jerry's standing there waiting for Larry to punch he seems to be setting, trying to set Larry up for a left hook a lead off left hook Again, a left hand. Larry Holmes keeping Cooney in the center of the ring now, and that, of course, is significant. He has done that for the most part all night. He has really not let himself get trapped on the ropes. Now it's Cooney against the ropes. Holmes just kind of measuring him. Left hook is short. Yeah, but I'm surprised that uh, Holmes is not showing any effect of those low blows by Jerry Cooney because normally they really take their toe, especially when a, a, it's a good punch, good solid punch. It's been only one knockdown in the fight. I don't think there were a lot of people who expected that few. Nor did anyone 
expect the fight to go quite as long as it has. Now there's a little bit of blood showing from alongside the bridge of the nose, not only on the bridge, but alongside the bridge of the nose of Jerry Cooney. Oh, or rather Cooney had had a problem with the top of the bridge of the nose. This is not in that area. It is alongside the bridge of the nose. And that was three pretty good punches that time by Jerry Cooney. Fatigue has sent with both fighters, although they're in tremendous shape. And the punches doesn't don't have that much sting to it, although I think through fatigue, if a good solid punch lands, someone may go down. That was a right hand to the side of the head again. That has been Holmes' most effective weapon, and he did score with it again, but Cooney did not back up at all. It's really hard to pick out either one of these fellows who right now is the stronger of the two. Holmes goes back up on his toes and scores, but takes a shot from Cooney in return. Holmes paws at Cooney now, flicks the left jab in the face, and they tie each other up. Not a lot of clinches, an awful lot of action in this fight, right? And especially for big men. Normally they, they hold and clinch, but these two guys have been going at it. Larry Holmes has proved that he is a true champion, and Cooney... There was a right hand and another point. right. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Ray. I'm sorry, but two good right hands by the champion against Jerry Cooney, and that eye now starts to look a little bit nasty again. Larry, uh, Larry's been working on the eye ever since it happened. And that looping right hand is what's being effective, and I think it's fair to say that Jerry Cooney is not seeing those punches coming. No, because the punches are coming. Larry Holmes throwing right hooks. That proves the intelligence and the experience of Larry Holmes. Is that true? Is that true? I'm okay. Come on, you're okay. Jerry, you gotta rough this guy. You're not rough. You're standing too straight. You gotta get low. You gotta get rough. You, you're waiting to fuck along on this guy. Get him up. We need these rounds. Take the lead. Don't back oh, away. Take the lead. Keep strength. Jerry, this ain't We're gonna get it out. Go to work on this guy. Go on in there. Come on. Come on. Guy. You gotta work. You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long on this guy. Holmes taking a little bit more time on the stool, and that is a change. the heat it has dropped considerably from the start of the car tonight it was well over 100 degrees and it is now down to a balmy 89 well it helps out these fighters because if they came out here earlier it would have been <laughs> above 100. there was a right hand by holmes a good shot that time by larry holmes all those punches at this point have got to hurt a left hand but cooney does not back up Right hand by Cooney, but again, mostly an arm punch. Not a lot of snap in the punch by Jerry Cooney, at least that one. There's a right hand again by Holmes. Larry still attempting to throw that right hook because Cooney, I, I don't think his vision is too good on the left side. That time Holmes went downstairs. Holmes just seems to be measuring and looking for the one shot that will hurt Jerry Cooney. Again, I think uh, Holmes is trying to set up Cooney for that looping right hook. He threw it right there, but Cooney caught it on the glove. A lot of times, Barry, you can see what a man, what kind of punch a man's going to throw if you watch his uh, stance. It was another good right hand, and Cooney drew a look from Mills Lane, but not a warning. Cooney knew that he was a little bit low, and he looked at Mills Lane, the referee. This is one of those fights you almost really didn't need a referee in there. There have been very few clinches. A lot of action. Cooney again tries to go downstairs, but Holmes has not been hurt by those punches since early on. Holmes again just keeps that right hand cocked, works with the left hand right now, but does seem to be looking for the one punch. And there is a right hand, but again, Cooney does not back up at all. So maybe some of Holmes' punches do not have quite the impact they did. One minute remaining here in the round. He's just There's walking. the right hand. He's just walking towards Larry now. And another right hand. And Mills Lane talking to Larry Holmes. Not sure what that was all about. Cooney tries a left hand. Holmes, I think, does not feel that Cooney can hurt him any longer. 
not Cooney's, having quite the respect that Cooney's legs are really wobbly. Cooney's really gone now. He's really gone. Cooney very wobbly in the center of the ring. Takes another right hand. Holmes knows he has his man in trouble. Another right hand. And that eye is really opened up. Combinations of punches thrown by the champion against Jerry Cooney. This one is all but over. Cooney against the ropes. Mills Lane steps in. He did not really go down. Victor Valley. And Victor Valley is saying no more, I believe. Victor Valley is in the ring saying no more. That's it. It is over. And Mills Lane raises Larry Holmes' hand in victory. So Larry Holmes retains the title. Victor Valley stepping in and stopping the fight. Cooney actually never really did go all the way down. Well, I'm sure that will be called a knockdown. They started to count. So the fight is over. And the champion, Larry Holmes, remains the champion. by technical knockout in the 13th round here. Time was running down in the 13th round. Cooney might have got through it, but there was a point you could really see that Cooney was out on his feet. And Ray, you picked that up very quickly. Well, fatigue really set in, and the accumulation of punches really did a number on Jerry Cooney. Larry Holmes saw that Cooney was in trouble, and it was just a matter of time, Barry. This is a look that I saw not terribly long ago with Sugar Ray Leonard, the man on my right, and that is a tired fighter you're looking at, the champion. I mean, not this one right here, Jerry Cooney. Well, fatigue said in more so than anything else, because Cooney took a lot of Larry Holmes' big punches. Holmes, without question, is a true champion. Fatigue set in, 